Hi, my name's Keith Cooper, North Plate Images, and in this video I'm going to have a look at printer detail and printer driver settings. Now, uh, I've done tests like this for a number of printers, and this particular test, and there's a linked article for this, and I'll put links to some of the other tests as well, concerns how much actual print detail do you need to send to a printer driver to produce a print? And it comes about uh, because in years gone by, um, there were certain magic numbers, printer resolutions that people generally checked and thought, well, this is the right number to do, 300, 360 as it was for Epson. And that they would size their images, scale them to multiples of that. So 326, uh, 720, 360, 720, 1440, 2880 get the numbers right there. Likewise, 300, 600, 1200 and so on. You'll see those numbers in printer resolutions. And these sort of became sort of magic numbers that if you printed um, your image at a multiple of 300 or 360, then your prints would be better. Now, this may have been true in the past and it's a popular myth that I still see repeated occasionally. Now, I've looked at that for the P Epson P700, the P900, the Canon Pro 200, the Canon Pro 300. And for all of those printers, and that's one of the reasons I've got so many test prints here, for all of those printers, the higher the resolution you sent to the of real resolution, image resolution you sent to the printer driver, the more printer detail you got. It tailed off a bit at very high levels, so there's no need to send ridiculously high thousand DPI resolution or thousand pixels per inch resolution to uh, to your printer. But this is specifically a test for the Epson P7500 I reviewed recently. Now, the P7500 is a big printer, has much bigger print heads than your normal uh, printers, even bigger than the Epson P5000, P7000 I've looked at recently. It is a huge print head. Epson changed the design somewhat so that the magic number for the P7500 is no longer 360 nozzles per inch spacing, so 3C, it's 300 much the same as it is on Canons. There is no inherent benefit in 300 versus 600, uh, 360. Uh, it's just that the manufacturing of it has produced 300 and it was a choice by Epson to do. So does that mean the magic numbers for the P7500 are now based on 300 multiples of rather than 360? No. Um, literally what I've done is printed lots of test images. Uh, I've got uh, an image here. It's a photograph I took in the Yorkshire Dales. This was taken with a 50 megapixel camera. That means there is a phenomenal amount of real detail in this image. And there are sheep in the distance and trees and whatever. So there's lots of fine detail. So here's the image. I can take that image, which if I were to reduce it down to this size, I can easily print, and there's enough real information to print at 1500 pixels per inch, which is a ludicrously high amount. Now, what I've done is I've produced these test images. I've photographed them with a macro lens. Um, I've used the 5DS and the Canon MPE 65 macro. I've taken photos at very high resolution. Now these are the set details of the photos I've taken. Um, they have taken a two to one multiplication, so you can see the individual ink dots. These are just the images themselves. And what you end up with when you look is not much detail at all. Um, but when you consider that this part of this image is on this print, that cow and sheep, they're just a few millimeters apart on the image. Now, what do these results actually tell me? Um, you'll not see much here. Have a look at the written article if you want to check the photos in more detail. They tell me essentially that the higher quality print settings on the printer are better. The high quality and maximum quality are better. They're broadly similar in terms of detail. The quality setting, which is the lower quality setting, is okay, it's faster, but you can see it's a more coarse output. So in this case, yeah, go for a high, um, high print resolution in the driver when you're sending in images. 
What about the maximum quality versus the high quality? Uh, maximum quality prints slower. It does on some images I've noticed during testing look slightly better. I could perhaps see a slight difference. Is not that much difference. If you use that and the maximum carbon setting or whatever it is, um, you can use those. Now, on the Epson P700 and P900, for some papers, such as this luster paper, and this is Epson Premium Luster, for some images, I wouldn't print them at the absolute highest quality settings because there's a slight bronzing as visible. Now that is, if you look very carefully, uh, it's the Epson pigment inks on this paper, I can see perhaps just a touch of it on this with the Epson P7500, different ink set. So it means that whereas for the P700, P900, depending on paper you're using, I would be careful about using the very highest settings because they might introduce bronzing. On the P7500 there's no worry there. So what about details sent to the uh, sent to the printer, or I say sent to the printer driver? What I would say is that if your image has the resolution, then sending it at 600 pixels per inch will give you slightly more detail than 460, which was the other one I did here, and gives more detail than 300. So it's pretty much what you'd expect. Um, higher quality settings work. Sending more detail to the printer driver works up to a point. Whereas on other printers, sending excessive detail didn't have any effect. You just got no benefit from it. Possibly on the P7500, I'm seeing a slight reduction in detail. So what would I do if I was printing on the P7500 and wanted to maximize my detail, I would print at high quality or maximum quality, and I would send as much real detail to the printer driver as I could, up to 600 pixels per inch. So it means if I had an image that I was printing, a very high resolution image that came to seven or 800, would I send seven or 800 to the printer? No, I'd probably downsize that to 600. Whereas if I were printing on a P900 or P700, I'd send 700 with no problem. It's just a very subtle difference. The other thing is I would say is that this almost certainly varies by paper type. So if you are interested in the absolute finest detail, then you'll need to do some experiments like this. Now I've got the written article which goes into all the details and things, but you will need to do some experiments to find out for yourself what's the best settings for it. But um, it has answered a question for me that, um, well, actually the, the previous testing really answered that, is that whenever you see somebody saying that printers, you should send a particular resolution to a printer for optimum results, that may have been valid 15 years ago. Today, modern printers, modern printer drivers, forget it. Um, send the detail you've got um, up to, in this case, up to a limit, but with ordinary printers. One quick bit to note is that if I was printing an A2 print and I wanted the absolute finest detail because I knew for some reason people were going to look at it at ludicrously short distances with magnifying glasses, you will get a slightly sharper print, more detail, from an Epson P900 than you will from an Epson P7500. But then the P7500, 9500 as well, is a big printer and makes big prints that the P900 can't do. So, um, yeah, tiny little benefit there to the P900. Um, but yeah, the P7500, still the best colour printer that uh, I've tested for years. Anyway, I hope this sort of arcane sort of detail is of use to some people. Um, test, test it out, have a look at the articles, um, and if you're unsure, don't take my word for it, do your own testing. Anyway, hope that's been of use. Thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel. It's not all as tediously technical as this. Some of it will be. Um, and uh, thanks and goodbye.